And now we have a session on introduction to open form structure and dynamic mixed dict by Dr. Chandan Bose from University of Edinburgh. I would like to welcome him for his talk. Yeah, so a warm welcome, Dr. Chandan Bose. So I'll just brief his uh, bio sketch. He has a very big uh, bio, bio sketch, but uh, let me introduce uh, him to you all. So uh, Dr. Chandan Bose uh, did his master's from Jadavpur University, uh, Kolkata, and was a gold medalist uh, in his batch. He was a first class first uh, in his batch. He did his uh, PhD from IIT Madras and has been awarded the uh, Institute uh, Research Award, Best Thesis Award, and the prestigious Indian National Academy of Engineering Innovative Project Award. So uh, he did his uh, postdoctoral research uh, from the University of Leeds, Belgium, and is a senior postdoctoral research fellow and adjunct uh, lecturer at the School of Engineering, University of Edinburgh. And he is also a member of the Open Form Technical Committee of FOSI, IIT Bombay. So we, it's a pleasure to have you here, sir. Uh, over to you, you can begin the session. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Pyle, and thanks everyone for joining the session. And uh, I hope that it will be useful to whatever projects you are involved with uh, in open form. Uh, so let me first try to share my screen uh, to see that if it is happening properly. So I have 45 minutes. So I will try to uh, first give you an overview of what type of mesh motion or dynamic meshing uh, we can actually incorporate in our uh, open form projects so this will be first uh, overview of different kind of mesh motion algorithms that are available in open form uh, and i understand completely that it is a bit advanced topic but due to my unavailability i have to give the talk today at the starting day but i will uh, take you through the process and then we will do uh, one of uh, one or two example problem so that you can do it with me uh, and uh, just to ensure at first that you have the materials uh, of two case directories that I have shared. Uh, is it true? Pyle, can you confirm that? Uh, yes, the case files were uh, sent to them uh, through our enemy ICT team. So all of them have received it. Okay, so I request all of you just to download uh, the two case files that I, I have uh, shared to you and towards the end of the talk, I will tell you uh, which are those files and what uh, do they mean and how to run them and how to visualize what kind of mesh motion we can uh, incorporate. Okay, uh, all right. I think uh, with that, I would like to start uh, this session or this talk. Uh, and the title is uh, Introduction to Dynamic Messing, but I will also take you through the introduction to the case directories of OpenFORM first because I can completely understand that you have just uh, learned the messing uh, in OpenFORM. So block mess in an uh, introductory uh, example and then an advanced setting, but you may not have already run many cases so whatever case one or two as time permits uh, uh, we will run together i will take you through the steps one by one all right and i request you all of you to make it interactive and uh, so as i have already given a, a big introduction i just want to correct one thing that i did not do my masters from jadavpur university i did my bachelors and i did my masters and phd from iit madras and now I am in the University of Edinburgh. All right. Uh, and I am uh, since I'm involved in the technical committee for documentation and tutorial. So you are, please feel free to reach out to me if you have any particular queries or if you want to contribute to the tutorial repository of uh, OpenFOAM uh, directory. And uh, just to inform you at the start that there is also an OpenFOAM journal. Uh, and you can see these two cover pages, which actually summarizes my research interest. And I'm interested in biomimetic fluid structure interaction problem. So in the 2022 cover, you can see the flow field above a porous disk, which we are modeling to understand the flow dynamics of a dandelion seed. And then 2021 cover below, uh, you can see uh, the figure that that comes from my PhD thesis. It's a chaotic flow field around a flapping airfoil. So uh, throughout this talk, I would uh, give you some examples and those examples uh, 
comes from two main references. The first main references, which is very important for all of you. And I would strongly encourage you to go through the link, uh, which is open form wiki tutorials, and you will get a lot of tutorial problems and contributions from the community. Although this is the open CFD version, but it's the it's almost the same because now you are doing open form version seven or higher, which is actually the foundation version. And all of my examples will work with that. I have tested that the case files will work with open form seven, as we will see in a while. But this link that I'm giving because I am uh, associated with the open CFD version. So you can go to the link and see the contributions from the community and you can go through the open form journal and download the associated codes with the paper. So those are very uh, useful if you want to build up your project career in open form. And the second important reference would I would suggest you to go through the tutorials that are provided by my colleague uh, Joel. Uh, uh, he he is the uh, one of the main contributor of the company Ulp Dynamics, which actually has uh, given a lot of contribution in building up this open form tutorials. All right. So about this training, I have already told you that uh, whatever we will learn and we will see uh, is can be reproduced in open form version seven. As I hope that you all of uh, you are installed with version 7 so we can do things together and make this session interactive please. So the agenda of this talk would be first to give you a recapitulation about uh, what a open form uh, case looks like which you have already seen in this previous two or three tutorial session but I will just uh, take you through that and we will also see how overall the open form code repository look like so uh, uh, so as all of you can understand it as a software but i would take a diff, uh, take a detour from your understanding and i will tell you that the open form is not a black box like the commercial softwares but it's a code repository so it's very important for you to go through the codes and open the codes and see what is written in c++ language all right and the main topic of this uh, session would cover different examples of dynamic messes. So what do you mean by dynamic messes? So till now, uh, whatever tutorial I suppose you have done, uh, you have done a flow field within a lead driven gravity and a flow field within a pipe and so on, and you have prepared the messes. So in all these problems so far that you have done, there the mesh does not move. So you solve the uh, transport property, whether it is a flow field, whether it is heat transfer, whatever it is, it, your mace remains static, all right? But if we consider more, more interesting and more difficult problems where I need to move the mace to facilitate different uh, applications, such as one of, the, one of the very interesting one is the fluid structure interaction. So how can we do that? So it is a bit advanced level of uh, application. So open form uh, code repository already has many features to incorporate these things. And these are the main features that I have noted down here. One is mesh morphing. So what is mesh morphing? Mesh morphing is nothing but where we deform the mesh. So in this uh, animation, as you can see, it's an example of mesh morphing. So we see a mesh where an airfoil is actually pitching, but to incorporate that pitching motion, we are actually deforming a region of the mesh based on a inner and outer diameter, all right? So how do we do that? What are the different algorithms involved in that? So we will look into that. Uh, I will just give you an overview and we will do an example and then you can build it on that. The other methods which we will not we will not cover today, but are possible in open form are overset messes. Second is moving messes where you can move the whole mess together. Uh, let's say to uh, to solve a problem like slossing, where you have a container full of liquid and let's say a truck or tra a truck containing a tank of uh, petrol, and then when the when the car moves or the truck moves there is a slossing within the within the container if you want to solve such problems you have to move the whole mesh region 
either with a prescribed motion or as a fluid structure interaction problem, you need to use this moving meshes. Then there are sliding meshes such as arbitrary mesh interfaces, AMI capabilities in open form. And the last and very interesting one is the adaptive mesh refinement. I will show you the examples of these cases just to show and get an impression that how we move the meshes. But for now, in this session, we will mainly focus on mesh morphing, where we deform the meshes to incorporate our desired motion of the structure. Uh, and we will see what are the different algorithms for that. All right. So before going into that, before diving into the dynamic mesh motion, let's recap uh, what you have already learned throughout the morning. And I can understand this is, I think, the last session. So probably uh, it's a good idea to recap things. So if we want to solve any problem, let's say we want to solve the previous problem that I showed, that we want to understand how the flow field changes when an airfoil moves or airfoil pitches. So as an overall a CFD engineer, how do you tackle this problem? So first of all, you need a geometry, all right? Like I was seeing in the previous hands-on session, like the geometry of the pipe. So if you want to mesh a pipe, you need a geometry, you need a pipe. Then what we need to do to solve the transport or scalar transport equation within that region, let's say, uh, for example, Navier-Stokes equation to solve the flow field, we need to discretize that geometry. And to do that, we mesh that geometry. And then after that, we need a solver or we need CFD, uh, CFD solving methodology or algorithms to solve those governing equation in each of those discrete points. And we can do that by either serially with one processor or parallelly by co-processing it over multiple processors. And once we solve the equation, we need to, we need to actually observe what are the outcomes of that simulation. So we do post-processing, all right? And so, so we can divide overall as pre-processing, solving, and post-processing. And in the pre-processing, just to give you an idea that in open form, we have block mesh capability, which you have already practiced today. We have snappy hex mesh. We have other capabilities like CF mesh and et cetera. And we have uh, commercial options like GMSH and so on. And we have ANSYS fluent meshing, their own capability uh, and so on. And for the solver part, we divide the whole open form code into incompressible, compressible, multi-phase, combustion, heat transfer, and so on. So in the coming two days, you might see some of these examples such as heat transfer and multi-phase flows. And then in the post-processing, we, uh, we have open form utilities, but normally we use Paraview, uh, which is an open source post-processor. There are visit and other parts. And also we have ANSYS, uh, take plot, etc. So now if we if we look into the code structure of open form, what we will look into that, we have a project directory where my open form is installed. All right. And we can access it. I will show you, we can access it by going to that directory by the CD command that cd dollar wm underscore project underscore directory. All right. If you go there, you will see that the whole open form code is actually divided into are categorized into different folders. One is the main application folder where my main uh, solvers are located. So they are actually this app within application solvers are the most important directory that you need to look into if you want to use a particular solver. Then we have tutorial folders, which you have already accessed by dollar form underscore tutorial. Then the most important is SRC, which is which represents source code, which contains most of the source codes that is written within this open home framework. All right. And bean is an installation uh, folder. ETC is the configuration folder and WMake is the folder which contains script to compile the C++ codes. So how many of you have not seen this uh, structure? You can just unmute yourself and tell me because it's difficult to see how many of you are 
All right, raising hand box because I can see how many of you are raising hand. Okay, so I think at least more than 10 people have not seen. So it's a good idea to, to first look into the whole code structure uh, to understand to understand how may, uh, how the codes are actually categorized. And the most important folders here are the application and solver folders, tutorial folders, and the SRC folder, all right? And if you go to any particular solver, you will see that we solve a transport equation, all right? Or we have a partial differential equation, which we discretize using CFD algorithms. And OpenFOAM is known for its high level uh, language, high level coding pattern. So if you can see this particular governing equation, which is a partial differential equation, we can just write a, a bunch of line of codes in open form in C++ to solve it. So we just write solve and within that solve uh, block, we just, we just mention whether it is a finite volume method or finite volume code, which is FVM or FVC. And then we have different functions already in built within open form to actually solve different terms, such as we want to solve this partial derivative with respect to time, we do DDT of rho u, all right? Then similarly, if we want to do divergence, we use div function. And then if we want to solve a Laplacian function, we solve Laplacian, right? So, so this is the high level programming that is used in open form. And in the coming uh, problems, when you solve, use a particular solver, such as IcoFoam, you have used IcoFoam for cavity, right? So if you go back to the source code of IcoFoam, which is maybe located in this application solver part, and some of the parts will be located in the SRC. So you can see that this type of high level programming is used, which is really in that code, all right? But now uh, we will not go into that. We will use that solver and simulate some of the problems. So the other thing that I want to show you uh, about your installation directory and the user directory. So you can, uh, it's, it's a better idea to uh, show you that. So I will, okay. So this yes. is the terminal that I'm using. Uh, and I have actually installed open form seven just to do things with you uh, so that you can do the same thing. So if you just open your terminal, first thing first, the first comment that we use to before we can use the open form environment is to source the bassers. All right. So I, I guess that you have already uh, known that. So I will just let's let's do that. So. My open form is installed in OPT. Okay. So I will do go to the installation folder and source the BASRC file, which you might already have included in your system BASRC, which happens automatically. So by this comment, by sourcing this BASRC file, which is located within the ETC folder, I enable the environment of open form and now I can use different uh, environment variables, all right? So now uh, you have already learned some of them, but if you want to look at where is your installation folder, okay? So to do that, just type F-O-A-M, foam, the foam part of open foam, okay? If you do that, you go to the directory where your source code is located, okay? And if you check the path of that, I can check it that my open form seven code folder is located within OPT open form seven. Okay. So can you, can, are you able to do, go to your installation folder? So yes, we sir. can do the same thing yes, by going, by typing the CD command and going to this thing, CD dollar WM project direct underscore dir okay so you can see that both of them are the same folder let me check the chat okay all right so so this these are this is the code folder where it is located and then if you just see what are the what are the different fo folders you can see here that 
and these different folders can change with version to version may not be the act exactly the same thing but the main folders that i told you will be the same so within this you can see this application folder within which my solver fold solvers folders are located then we have the uh, important src folder which is the source code folder within which all my source codes are located and we have this tutorial folder all right so now i just went to cd dollar wm underscore project underscore directory so this is what is this this is nothing but an environmental variable by just typing that we went to the same path like you used basically going to cd dollar foam foam all capital foam run you have used it before as i've seen and you see that there is no such folder because the path is home open foam run and we do not i did not set this folder that path so it is showing no such file but if you have already set you can go to your run folder okay like so what are this environmental variable if you want to check this uh, what is the comment so we can easily check this by by using this uh, this command just let me show you this yes so we can grab the foam the foam keyword from uh, my environment and i can show you all these uh, different environmental variables that you are using can you see it i hope you can see all the different environmental variables that are available within the open form environment and you can directly use them to go to those folders without even using all these long paths where you can make mistake all right so that was my main uh, objective to show this to you so that it is useful to you later and then let's go back to our main topic and uh, resume our discussion all right so now coming to the case structure before we jump into the dynamic mesh motion is that uh, we are actually if we go to any tutorial folder and i have shared with you two folders i hope that all of you have opened that and actually seeing what are the contents you will see that there is a zero folder where basically we include all my initial condition and boundary conditions so all the state variables it can be velocity pressure temperature and so on and then we will have a constant folder within the main case folder which will contain my mess within the polymess folder so when you do block mess your block mesh dict is executed and your mesh file creates a folder called polymesh where your mesh files are located and we will have a transport property file where actually we write down all the different constants of the system such as kinematic viscosity and so on okay and the other folder is system folder where basically my main executable uh, lo are located okay so we basically give the instruction to the code that how much time it to run for and what will be my time step size and so on those are located in this control dict file and the fv scheme and fv solution contains the instruction for which cfd schemes to use what will be my other algorithms to solve that and so on so i hope that now uh, you guys have uh, downloaded the folders that i have shared and if you see those folders in each of those folders you have these three files mainly zero constant and system and also you have a bash script which contains the commands that we need to run to execute this simulation okay so can uh, any one of you can confirm me that you can see these files uh, within the folder that i have shared just unmute yourself and yes, tell sir. me okay all right so yes, now we are ready with the case folder now i will give you a first a background of what we are going to do and then we will run those case and see the files what are there one by one okay so 
as I have already told you that when we use dynamic mesh, it is the difference between these dynamic mesh cases as opposed to the static mesh, mesh cases that you have already used is that we have to move the grid point. All right. So basically, if you see my these examples, okay, so these are the three examples of three different dynamic mesh motion where you can see that first in the case of mesh morphing, we are actually morphing the mesh where we are deforming the mesh to move my structure. In the second case, we actually have in the AMI means arbitrary mesh interface method where we have two different mesh region and one mesh slides over the other. And the third example is adaptive mesh refinement where based on some scalar criteria that we will propose, the mesh gets, uh, gets divided and gets finer and finer to capture the details of the flow field. So these are the different examples of dynamic mesh motion. Now, mathematically, how does it how does it come into picture? So we have a trans scalar transport equation in terms of our integral equation or in a partial differential form. In this case, you see the integral form of a scalar transport uh, equation. So the problems, if you need to morph the mesh, if you need to add or remove new cell, if you need to slide the mesh, if you need to overlay one mesh on another just to move the structures, we need this dynamic mesh algorithm and which are very useful for solving different physical problems, right? And these dynamical meshes are compatible with all any physical models. It can be Navier-Stokes equation solver. It can be your heat equation solver. It can be your, your porous body solvers whatever it may be, uh, you can use these uh, dynamic mesh algorithms globally, all right? So they are not dependent on anything. And what are the application and why do we need it? As I already told, if you want to simulate a rigid body motion, if you need to simulate a fluid structure interaction problem, or you need to refine your mesh only in the regions where you are interested in, you, can, you need to use this kind of dynamic mesh algorithms. So for example, uh, as this example, I give again and again, because I've done my PhD on this. So uh, if you take an example of a flapping airfoil, you can simulate the same problem using different dynamic messing algorithms. Okay. And these three examples are actually, uh, first one is arbitrary mess interface. Second is mess morphing. Third is overset mess where one mess moves over another mess. All right. So these kind of examples, this can be any uh, any more difficult and challenging example, but based on the physics that you want to capture, you might have to choose which dynamic mesh algorithm is most suited and most accurate to give you the proper results. All right. So how do we incorporate these dynamic mesh algorithms? So that we do by a file called dynamic mesh dict which we keep in the constant folder okay so if you need to incorporate this algorithm if you need to tell open form see i want to move my mess or i want to morph my mess you need to include this file which is dynamic mess dict which is in the constant folder and i request all of you to go back to your constant folder of the cases that i've shared and you should find this file which is called dynamic mess dict all right and what else we need? We basically need to define the motion type, all right? So how are we going to move it? Are we going to move it uh, with a prescribed motion or with uh, passively, which governs by the flow field and so on? And accordingly, we have to define the boundary condition, which we define in the zero folder as the moving wall velocity or calculated because that body so in this example if you see this body this airfoil is my structure which is moving so the bound what will be the boundary condition for this airfoil that boundary condition will be moving wall velocity or a calculated method which is applicable for fluid structure interaction problem so these two changes you need to have in your case folders you have to very cautiously see what boundary condition you have given to the moving structure, which will actually move the mesh. And the other thing is that 
what is uh, whether you have the dynamic mesdict file in your constant folder okay so these are the source code folder paths where you get different dynamic mesh codes already available in open form so i'm not just uh, going there because i don't have enough time to show all these folders to you but if you go to your src folder which i just showed you that which consists of all the source code you will find dynamic mesh dynamic fb mesh fb motion solver rigid body dynamic 6 degree of freedom uh, body motion so these are all the different dynamic mesh folders which contains related codes to incorporate this motion all right so you can go back to your installation folder and check whether you have these folders in within the src folder okay so i will just now show you two folders just to show you that where these codes are located again this is for your future reference if you want to modify some of these codes and you want to write your own algorithm to move the mess you need to know where these source codes are actually located so to do that let's quickly go to my terminal back and if i go to src okay and you see the path is slash opt open form 7 src and let's see what are the folders we have so we have here dynamic fb mesh dynamic mesh and so on six degree of freedom uh, six degree of rigid body motion etc so these are the folder which contains the dynamic meshing codes that you might need to modify if you need okay so now if we go to uh, a folder called fb motion solver which we will use uh, in the dynamic mesh dict just in a while. So let's go to FV motion solver and we see what are the different, there are different folders, but I just need to know what are my solvers which can move the mesh. So I will again go to FV motion solvers and you will see there are different mesh motion solvers available particularly within this mesh morphing type of dynamic meshing okay so there are displacement based solver where you define the criteria for movement of the mesh as displacement there are velocity based criteria or algorithms where you define the velocity of the moving mesh or the grid velocity you have a uh, component displacement there are different algorithms so there is no time to tell you what are the algorithms but i just wanted to show you the path that where your codes actual codes are located so that you do not use open form as black box okay so that's the that was my motive well so let's go ahead and before i go to the folder quickly i just want to give you some cautions on numerics that you need to use for this dynamic meshes okay because as you can understand the last point says that no need to say that dynamic meshes are intrinsically unsteady so when you are moving the mesh or you are trying to solve a problem which incorporates moving mesh your problem becomes unsteady and when your problem becomes unsteady your solution or the cfd results are very much sensitive to the grid resolution which you need to determine by grid independent study which you probably will do in the later uh, sessions and then you need to be very careful about the time step that you use okay and combining these two there is a criteria called current number or cfl number which decides the convergence of the CFD scheme that you are going to use. All right. So you have to be very carefully choose this delta T. You have to very carefully choose the grid size because the problem is unsteady. All right. And also you have to choose uh, carefully the CFD schemes or CFD solution methods uh, based on their stability and accuracy for dynamically moving mesh problems. And these are very different from the problem that you just solved, let's say a lead driven cavity. All right. And it is needless to say that these simulations are computationally expensive. Uh, of course, if you want to solve a challenging problem, you need to solve it for more time. And going back to the main method that we will see now is the mesh morphing. And now I hope that you have a fair idea about what is mesh morphing, where we are deforming the mesh. 
So it's also known as mesh diffusion or mesh smoothing technique. And we can incorporate predefined motion such as sinusoidal motion, cosinusoidal motion by a mathematical function in the dynamic mesh dict and point motion file, which I'll show you. Or we can give any arbitrary motion in a tabular form, which also I will show you in a while. Okay. And without wasting much time, we will see what are the libraries and all. And I want to show you uh, in a hands-on with the folder. So let's, let's go back to our folders. So please keep those two folders that I've shared. And I'm going to show you them and open the files one by one and show you what are those files. Okay. Yeah. So I have shared to you two folders. One is called Miss Motion, which we are going to look at now. And the second one is called input table. So these two are actually, these two simulates, uh, these two simulates nothing but the problem that I just showed you here. Uh, let me show you again. So we are basically going to solve this problem, okay? So we have a cylinder which is oscillating with a prescribed motion. And to incorporate this oscillation, we are using dynamic meshing in open foam. And I will show you how we can incorporate different motion function using these algorithms. All right. So uh, can anyone confirm that all of you have opened those folder so that we can look at them uh, together? Yes, sir. All right. So let's open yes, the mesh motion folder. Okay. So here I have already run the simulation because it takes some time. So you have all the solution files already. And this point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3 are not, nothing but the snapshot that we write using the right interval. Okay. So mainly you will have zero constant system and this three folder. Okay. We will look into this three folder and run the case. And you have this run underscore solver dot sh. This is the bash script where the commands are written. Okay. So let's look into the zero folder together and we have here pressure, velocity. These two are quite normal, which you already had also for the cavity case. All right. So this gives you the, the kind of initial and boundary condition for the pressure and the velocity variables. Okay. But the extra two files that you have here is point displacement and point motion U, which we basically where we will define the motion. All right. So you can open this however you want using notepad or whatever. I am I am actually using it by a software called text edit. Uh, and let's open the file and look at it together. Okay. So I have uh, created a mess and given to you already where it is a rectangular domain and we have a cylinder as a wall. All right. And so basically we have outlet one patch is outlet where we are giving. So this is my point displacement. So these are the boundary condition that we mentioned. So these are pretty standard boundary condition for all the patches, but the important one is for cylinder. Okay. As I told that if you are going to move the cylinder, you want to have a different boundary condition given to the body. Okay, so here the type that I'm using, which comes from this dynamic meshing library is the oscillating displacement. That means the cylinder will oscillate with a certain amplitude and with a certain frequency. So to define that we have to give what is the frequency and in which direction. So this amplitude is a vector. So this first one is X, second one is Y, third one is Z and Omega is the frequency. So I'm telling that the cylinder is oscillating in the y direction with an amplitude of four and everything in open form is in SI unit, as you know, and omega is basically radian per second in this case. Okay. And this value is uniform. So this is the extra part of boundary condition that we need to give to the cylinder to denote that the cylinder is going to move. Okay. So next. What is the other file? Let's look at it point motion U, where we will basically uh, see what type of motion we are giving. 
okay so let's look into it everything is the same so these are all the patches which are already defined in block mess okay so if you see the block mess file you can understand how the messing is done and you have already learned that so here in the point motion you also i have given the same boundary condition they should have the same values with amplitude frequency and the type of the oscillation so this is a function which is already coded in open form that oscillating displacement we want to incorporate uh, so that's that's done so anybody has any confusion over this zero folder if yes, yes please sir. unmute yourself and ask that is the difference between point displacement and point you know, simply over. Why we have these two different folders? Yes, yes. So th these two files, I, I'm going to that. So they are linked to the mesh motion libraries that I just showed you, right? So basically, as if you can uh, just recapitulate that, uh, I just showed you that you can apply this mesh motion based on velocity criteria, based on displacement criteria, based on mixed criteria or many things. So these are the input boundary conditions files or these files are linked to those libraries. So if you go into detail of the libraries that I'm going now, you will understand uh, why they are re required actually. So coming to the main file, which is the dynamic mesh dict within the constant folder. So if you open the dynamic mesh dict file, uh, you will see that we have actually mentioned the name of the method and name of the library file, name of the algorithm, everything. Okay. So here first coming to the fact that the dynamic FB mesh is the type of the dynamic meshing solver algorithm that we want to use. So this is the dynamic motion solver FB mesh is a library which contains all this algorithm. All right. So, and it is located in the dynamic FBMS folder in the SRC, as you have already seen. And now we are actually including the executable that is needed to execute this, which is this lib file of every motion solvers. But the important thing is you do not need to change anything here. The, what you need to change is that what type of motion solver that you need to use. So the motion solver here, I'm using displacement Laplacian, all right? And we have now also know that where this folder is located. So you can go to that folder and open this code and try to understand how it is written. But just to run this simulation, you just need to know what type of Laplacian motion is available within mesh morphing. So one is displacement Laplacian, other one is velocity Laplacian. And there are many other things which I have commented here just for the sake of if you want to explore these things, such as uh, there are multi solid body motion solver where you can actually simulate multiple bodies together. There are uh, velocity Laplacian, I have already told. There are displacement interpolation method where the mesh morphing happens through an interpolation technique. So there are many more and it depends on the solver version also. So as you go towards the newer version, you will get more capabilities here. Okay. Now next block of code is what is the input parameter for this displacement Laplacian. So we need to give this displacement Laplacian coefficient. Okay. Where the coefficient is nothing but diffusivity. We need to mention how, how the mesh smoothing or mesh diffusion is going to happen and for that we need to use different function are there so there are inverse distance inverse volume quadratic inverse dis uh, distance exponential and so on so in this case i'm just using inverse volume and i'm mentioning the patch name which is moving so the patch name the wall that is moving is cylind cylinder okay so I just need these two comments. So you already know that this double slash is nothing but commenting part. So where it is double slash or slash within this block of slash star, those are not executed. They are just commented. Okay. I have incorporated all the possible options here just for the sake of your knowledge that you can go back and try it later. Okay. And if you use velocity Laplacian, you actually need to give velocity Laplacian coefficient similarly to this. So depends which one you are using. All right. 
So I hope that this dynamic mesh dict file is clear to you at least where we are incorporating this. And the other things are actually the same. Transport properties contains the kinematic viscosity, turbulence properties contains whether it is laminar or turbulent and polymesh folder actually contains your mesh, mesh information. All right. Now let us look into the system folder where we have the block mesh dict and uh, let me show you, but I'm I'm not going to explain this to you because there is no time. Uh, you already know how to mess bodies in block mess. And if you open this block mess dict, you will see that what are the different vertices and then what are the different blocks and edges and what are the different boundaries. Okay. So here in the boundaries, we are defining these patches out symmetrical ones into inlet cylinder and we are using the same names of the patches in the zero folder where we are actually deciding on the initial and the boundary condition all right so next is my control dict which is uh which is important for dynamic messing because you need to decide the delta t clearly so let let us look into that Okay, and please let me know if you have any questions by the meantime, but here, so what I suggest is that you can comment out all the function of func force function objects. So for force, you can use that, but all the other function object you can ignore because you do not need it. You mostly need start time, stop time, end time, etc., which are very normal. But the important thing here is Delta T. Okay. And if this delta t you choose uniformly, then you need to do a time independence test to decide which delta t gives you converged result. Okay. And this write interval and write control where it gives you the capability to write your snapshot at some time step. So whether you want to write every time step or 100 time step, you can choose that. Okay. Another important uh, step is here adjust time step here i have done no but if you do yes then you can actually include another variable which is called actually max co which is basically nothing but the maximum value of the cfl number or the current number so if you do that your delta t will be automatically changed to keep this current number within the maximum limit whatever you mention here all right so this is somehow goes the structure of, of the thing. The other things are FB schemes and FB solution. You already know what are the different algorithms that you want to use from the theoretical knowledge. And then decompose per dict tells you whether you want to run it in parallel and how many processor you need to decompose the whole domain in. All right. So now we are ready to run this case. And I will also suggest you, but uh, let me explain the comments which we need uh, to run this case with. And please let me know at this stage if something is not clear to you. So once you have sourced the open foam environment, you know that the foam clean tutorial, this comment gives you the capability of cleaning your tutorial completely, all right? That's the first step. So you want to delete all your previous results just to clean your template file and then you do block mess by doing the block mess you basically mess your block mess dict and get the poly mess folder in the constant fo constant folder then if you want to check whether your mess is all right whether it is within the thresholds of skewness non orthogonality that you want to have your mess with it's okay then this is a comment to increase the speed of your simulation so you can just ignore it so it actually renumbers your messages to increase the speed of your simulation but main line is here which runs your code so i am not using any particular solver to solve an equation here i'm using move dynamic mess which is a solver just to move the mess without solving your transcalar transport equation all right and i do not want any function object or to just to calculate forces and so on that's why i am giving no function object 
and I want to write a log file of it. That's why I'm giving this command just to write a log file of this solver, which just moves the dynamic mesh. All right. So let's let's do that quickly, and then I I will take up your question. So let's go to home. I mean, uh, please go to the direct uh, go to the directory where it is located. Uh, okay. So this is showing something else. So let's go to. Okay. It's easier to open another one. Okay, so my folders are located in documents and open form. Uh, documents, I've forgotten actually. Uh, so then open form, all right. Then within that I have this folder, Chandan, yeah, I got it. So within that, Okay, so I have gone to the folder now and I have dynamic mess, right? So I have gone to the templates file. So you have this templates folder with this, uh, with this folder mess motion, right? So if I go to the mess motion, I see that I have zero constant system folder and the bash script and all the solutions files already. So what you do is that you just do dot slash run solver dot sh. Is it clear to everybody what to do? So go to your folder, just do dot slash run underscore solver dot sh, which has the steps that I showed you. So it will first clean the directory, then it will mess, mess the mess file, then it will move the mess, according to the dynamic mesh dict that is provided in the const constant folder all right so i will take 10 seconds and stop sharing just to see what is the scenario is everything clear to everybody are you in the folder that i have mentioned or not please tell me that or i can clarify if you have any problem okay so maybe you are shared as a zip folder that's why it is showing permission denied so let me show you what to do uh let me share my screen again because you have been shared this with uh jeep as jeep folder that's why it might show the permission denied so you type this comment i will put in the chat ch mod hyphen capital r triple seven and dot okay just go to the folder open the terminal and then type this comment which i'm putting into the chat window everyone yes so after you do that then if you do whatever i'm telling it should be it should work so ch mod hyphen capital r triple seven then space then dot okay all right so so once i do that let me do it again okay i just do it it, it just changes the permission uh permissions of the file now i just do dot slash R U N hyphen, then if you put tab, it should automatically take the file run underscore solver dot sh. And if you run it, it will execute all the comments that is within that one by one. We can also do it uh, separately one by one, but it is easy for you. If you know what are the steps, you won't forget. You write it in a bash file and run it. So. Okay, I have not sourced the open form. So I have to again source the open form bassers. Okay. So let me see where I did it. Okay, let me do it again. So if you have not sourced the open form uh, environment, it will show that comment not found. Okay. So if you get that, you will understand that you have not sourced the bassers file. Uh, all right.
Okay, let me, I don't know, it's a Mac version, so it is doing something crazy. Let me go to Linux version, okay? I anticipated this, so I basically took this another version, okay? So can you see the same folder? Now it has zero constant system and run solver. And actually I am now opening a, opening uh, the terminal and I am so sourcing the same thing. So I'm sourcing slash OPT open form seven ETC and BASRC. Now I'm just running dot slash run underscore solver dot SH. Okay. If you run, you will see that one by one, all the comments will be executed and you will get the results. So now let me know if you have any problem or you are getting this. Yes. Okay. Now, if, if you got this, now let us visualize. All right. So you know how yes, to open Paraview and visualize already. So I'm just doing the same thing, doing a creating a para.form file just to open with Paraview because I want to use my different version of Paraview. So I'm using Paraview 5.10, some version, okay and opening it and let us see what type of simulation we have just done okay once it opens i apply do apply button and i see the mess because now you cannot see the mess so you go to the surface with edges and you see the mess that you have created at uh, initially okay although it's not at zero you can see the time uh, time folder here all right you can see the time is 0.025 if I don't, uh, if I do here, skip zero time and then apply, you can go to the first step. So this is the mess that it looks at zero time. Now, if you, if I play on the mess motion, you can see that I have given a prescribed motion, okay, which is a sine omega t with a particular amplitude and the frequency and the body moves along with the mess. All right. And it creates a mess morphing to incorporate this kind of problem. And if you solve, let's say this problem with Icofoam or any other solver like PISOFOAM, you can visualize what type of vortex setting and pressure field and how the velocity field changes. But here I have not solved for those. I've just moved the mess. Okay. So I think since I've already taken extra time, I'll not extend it more. But the other tutorial folder that I've given, if you go to the dynamic mesh stick, you will understand the differences there. Instead of a function, I am giving a table. So basically you, what you have to change is the point motion you and the, the, those files in zero folder and the dynamic mesh stick into the constant folder. And you can give any arbitrary motion of your body through a table form. Okay. And you can reach out to me if you are facing problem with that. Thank you very much. And uh, that's all from my side. And I'll be happy to answer any questions if you have. So lastly, uh, just do let me acknowledge uh, the other contributor actually. Otherwise, it won't be a kind of fair. I will try to acknowledge my colleague Joel here because as I have already given the reference, you can get many more tutorials in his company website. And this is a bit of advertisement that we are co-organizing with Joel, me and some other colleagues, the 18th open form workshop in Italy. So I'll be very happy if some contribution comes from India and it will be virtual. So if somebody is working in some project, they can virtually register and present their work. And uh, this is the these are the organizing committee where I am also in. So please feel free to reach out if you want more information. Thank you very much for attending the session. So thanks a lot, Dr. Chandan. So quickly, if you have any questions for Abushan or our team members or uh, for Dr. Chandan, we can just uh, have a quick five to ten minutes question and question and answer session. Yes, so I, I am here. So you feel free to ask me if you have any particular question to me. Sir, uh, in the airfoil case, um, is there any way to make like an angular displacement where you can have the change of angle of attack? But yeah. how would you specify around the point which it is changing the angle? Yeah, you can just change the kinematics as alpha zero plus 
a sin omega t where alpha zero will be your angle of attack that's one thing you change the kinematics code which gives you the kinematics or the second option is you can change your mace you can prepare your mace uh, which is at some angle of attack okay so basically uh, if you create your airfoil originally at zero time at some angle of attack and then give the same a sin omega t motion so it will preserve that base angle of attack is it clear uh, no like an application where you calculate like lift and drag over all ranges of angle of attack like if you want to change the angle of attack uh, so that will take angular displacement right this was oscillation so how would you uh, make like an angular displacement okay okay i i got your question now so here in the point the u motion file we have given oscillating displacement function right so there are other functions like angular displacement. So you have to use a different mesh motion function to prescribe that. And to do that, you have to go back to the source code that those are within the SRC folder to see what are the different mesh motion function you are already have with. Let's say, for example, if you want to do FSI, you have to do six degree of freedom motion function. So, yeah, so you have to use different mesh motion functions. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Uh, yes. Sir, I, I have one question, sir. Uh, sir, is there any case available in this uh, open form tutorial, sir, like uh, for cardiovascular flow like blood, sir? Okay. Sir. These are very complex uh, set of problems. So, yeah, I mean, depends on whether you are doing Newtonian flow or non-Newtonian flow, but uh, and whether you want your geometry, so geometry of the heart to be flexible or rigid. If it is rigid, it's the same. I mean, in open form, you just have to provide the correct geometry and mace it properly and choose appropriate solver to solve that. Okay. So basically, if you want to solve simple incompressible flow, you can use any incompressible solver. But I don't think there is any ready-made uh, tutorial for cardiovascular flow within uh, open form, but you can create your own case files actually depending on the physics that you want to solve for. Okay, sir. Okay. Sir, I have one question. Uh, open form having a lot of solvers, right? Suppose yes. uh, I'm having a problem like uh, if I want to drop any solid body on the water surface. So how to know like which kind of solver uh, we are supposed to take? Like uh, whether this is multi-phase and what kind of solver. Yeah, so that use. is not related to open form. That is related to fluid mechanics. You need to do proper fluid mechanics courses to know what type of physics you want to simulate, right? So the, the problem that you just said that you want to leave a solid over a free water surface, it is a multi-phase flow because you have air and water and then you are doing a rigid body motion of the structure. So once you know that it is a multi-phase flow situation, that knowledge comes from your knowledge of fluid mechanics, not from open foam. Once you know that, you come to open form and search for appropriate multi-phase flow solvers, which can solve for multiple multi-phase flow air and water situation. And also you have to incorporate appropriate dynamic mesh motion algorithm to simulate the motion of the rigid body that you are leaving. Okay. So you have to break it in step by step, but the basic knowledge comes from the fluid mechanics and CFD, not from open form. So let's say which, Algorithms to use in open form, you need to know from your courses of CFD, not from open form. Okay, sir. Thank you. Sir, I have got a question. Sir, am I audible? Sure, sure. Please, sir, go ahead. Uh, sir uh, like you have shown the examples for rigid body motion mainly. So if yes. there is a flexible body displacement, then will there be difference in numerical stability means in these two cases and where will it be? Yes. So a flexible body problem like a appropriate two-way coupled FSI problem will depend on the coupling algorithm. How you are so there, there will be two components, one coming from the flow solver, another coming from the structural solver. So you have to also solve governing equations such as let's say Euler-Bernoulli beam equation for the structure. And the solution that you get from the structural solver has to be coupled to the Navier-Stokes solver, for example. And it depends on how you are coupling it. So there are different coupling algorithms such as partition approach or monolithic approach, weak coupling, strong coupling. So it's a, it's a, it's a more difficult and involved problem which needs more 
knowledge from fluid structure interaction background. And accordingly, you also have to change the CFD schemes just to reduce your error or make it converge. Okay. And this physics, whether the code will converge or not, will depend on the non-dimensional parameters that are involved with the system. So let's say, for example, the mass ratio. How, how soft or how flexible your solid is in comparison to the fluid density is an important factor, whether your uh, solution schemes will converge or not. Okay, so thank you so much. Thank you. Um, all right. So, yeah. So basically, I think uh, I'm done with it. And just I wanted to give you my email ID. Uh, if you need, if you have more questions, I cannot promise you that I will answer everyone immediately, but I will try to get back if you have more questions. Uh, all right. Yes, and if you want to actually also do some internship related to open form, please apply to the summer fellowship of FOSI, where I also last year guided some of uh, one of the candidate. And also, if you have more involved project in mind, feel free to reach out to me because I'm going to join probably University of Birmingham as an assistant professor. So I will look for some interns to work with me. Yeah, so, so we have already announced the semester-long internship for 2023. Yes, and, please apply to that. And yeah. we, I mean, I also closely work with other professors in IIT Bombay. So that is a very uh, nice platform to build your open form portfolio with very interesting yeah, projects. Mena with us today. And, uh, Mena worked with uh, Dr. Chandan Bose uh, in the, during the summer fellowship program. Yes. So there is always an opportunity. I'll talk about all this opportunity in the last day. So <laughs> I've kept it for now yes so since i will not see you all so i thank you again for attending the session and i hope that it was at least yeah. useful for a bit okay uh, thank sir. you yes yes please go ahead uh, sir how can you apply for the internship sir yes so pile will actually instruct yeah. you so there is always uh, already an in, uh, advertisement from foci that yeah. there is a one semester long summer internship so Pyle will give you all the details uh, toward in the coming sessions. So, so we did this Fossi dot in. There is a tab called uh, internship. There you can find uh, the advertisement. You can uh, apply to that. Yes. I'll uh, come to all these details in the last day. Exactly. So that's why I didn't yeah. announce so, it today. Yes. So I just wanted to give you my email ID in case if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Okay. Thank you, Pyle. So can I leave now? Thank yeah, you, sir. Yeah, we are, we are also bye -bye. almost uh, time. It's 5.30 almost. So I'll close the session today. We are done for the first day. So see you all tomorrow. And thanks once again for joining. Thank Have you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Yeah.